Hey guys, it's Raggy Rog here, coming at you today with a top 5 video about something that I could talk about for hours and hours, video games. Or more specifically in today's case, 5 things that I think, in my educated opinion, make a good game. Things that I think a game can't really be without, unless it's in really specific cases. I mean, some of these things might not apply to a real-time strategy game specifically, as an example. But generally speaking, rule of thumb, if I were a game designer, these are the rules that I would try to employ. First on the list, a game needs good game feel. When we talk about good game feel, it's literally that. It's how does it feel to play? Is it satisfying? When you input the commands on the controller, how responsive is the game? Does the environment make you feel good? It's, a lot, it's not just about mood. It's literally about how well your senses receive what the game is receiving, if that makes sense. So a good example of good game feel, I feel, is the original Devil May Cry. That is a game, the first time I picked it up, when you press the jump button, he jumps. You can control the direction that he moves in when he jumps. Uh, <clears throat> weapon strikes are fluid. Everything that you do in that game feels right relative to the inputs that you put into the game itself. The game responds well to the player, and that's really important. Second thing on the list is immersion. Now, there's a terrible misconception about immersion in video games that I think people really need to let go of, and that's the idea that a game should literally convince you that you are in that video game world, or when you're playing Fallout, you actually believe that you're experiencing a Fallout. Game devs aren't trying to actually give you PTSD, and I don't think it warrants good game design if a game convinces you that you're not playing, or that you're not actually in that world, it's unrealistic, and it's not really what we're talking about, if we're being completely honest. When we talk about, when we talk about good immersion in a video game, what we're actually talking about is a video game's ability to distract you from the world that you're already in. And a game fails to do this when it breaks little rules, not in every case, but typically, when a game has a habit of stopping you and explaining things to you. Tutorials are bad for this. Uh, when a game preaches its plot a little too hard. When it puts a lens on something that is grossly unimportant to you as the player. That's when immersion is broken. It's as simple as a game telling you that you can't go into this part of the world for any, literally any reason. And that breaks the immersion, what immersion actually means. So a good game needs to be able to make you feel like everything is happening fluidly without getting in your way, without stopping your pace. And that's the important thing about immersion in a video game. Third thing on the list, how a game keeps itself challenging. This is also important. When we talk about challenge in a video game, it's pretty easy to think about difficulty. Challenge isn't necessarily difficulty. You can have a game that is relatively easy to beat from start to finish, with no particular like incline of actual difficulty. This can be reserved for a selection at the very start of the game, where you can actually say beginner mode or hard mode, whatever. You know, game devs understand that they have to make a game for a wide variety of skill sets and uh, levels of, you know, experience in games. Some people just like a casual experience, so that's why story mode is a thing nowadays. But when a game challenges you, like actually challenges you, that's when it introduces new concepts. So when we're talking about challenge in a video game, what we're talking about is being positioned to think. Not necessarily too far outside of your comfort zone, unless that's what you like. But when we're talking about being challenged, 
the game needs to be able to provide you with something new to think about. Something that you learned yesterday has now changed, or something new has been added to the mix. And it's not necessarily more difficult than it was. You just have to stop for a second and think about it. Think about it, apply yourself, and overcome the challenge. And that's important. Number four. How well a game can seamlessly teach the player. And teach the player what? The mechanics of its game, typically. But it can come down to something as arbitrary as the game's plot or anything you can really think of that's in a game. How well the game teaches core mechanics to you by itself without preaching, without breaking that immersion that we talked about earlier, that makes for a good game. People like games like Dark Souls because they are challenging, but they also teach you what you need to know. The rule of thumb in Dark Souls, trial and error, right? You come at a boss, you fight the boss, you die a lot until you learn how to beat it. And the game doesn't stop you and throw, like, pages of instructions at you. Some games do, and I don't care for that myself, personally. But when a game takes the time to let you learn things by yourself, that's what helps to make a, an experience that is enjoyable and memorable. So I think that learning is important in a game, but more important is the ability to teach yourself through playing the game. That's what makes a good game in my book. Number five, the last one on the list, and it's kind of a mixture of all of the other ones put together. It's how can a game keep itself exciting? A game needs to be exciting for you to actually enjoy it, for you to remember it, for you to consider it a good game. You can have a mixture of all of the others, and that will contribute to making an exciting game but not necessarily. You can still also have all of those other things and still have a game that, for all intents and purposes, is quite drab, a bit dull, a bit rinse-repeat. You might have seen core elements in another game. It might just be uninspired. The game needs to go out of its way to keep you interested, and it can do this in a number of ways, depending on what type of game it is. If the game is story-driven, then you better hope that's a really well-made story. Uh, if it's a fighting game, you know, have unlockable characters. If it's an RPG, just have, like, new environments all the time, new enemies, whatever. The game has to go out of its way to keep itself interesting. If you've ever played, like, a demo of a game or something, like... I remember back in, uh, I must have been like 10, and I would play this like uh, demo of one of the Ratchet and Clank games. I can't remember which one. Uh, Ratchet and Clank was never my favorite. But the first time I played through that level, because it was like the first level of the game, and it was a big level, and it was fun and interesting, but instead of just buying the game, uh, my brothers and I would just play the demo over and over and over again. It didn't take that long before everything in that level became really boring. And not just because we'd seen it all before, but because they quickly ran out of things that we could do with what was in that level. There were weapons and gizmos and gadgets in that level that we probably could have used later on, learned more things about, but because the game wasn't able to give us anything new, because it was just a demo, we got pretty bored with it really quickly. So the fifth and probably most important thing of all for making a good game is that it does need to be interesting. It needs to be really exciting. So those are my top five things for making a good game. Will I ever make a game? Probably not. But I like to think about it. And if I did, those are the things that I would try to think about while making that game. Maybe you disagree and maybe you've got your own ideas about what makes a good game. If so, leave your, uh, leave your comments down below. I might read them, I might make an updated video about this one day, who's to say? Anyways, I'm Reggie Rob, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.